In previous video clips I've talked about getting a wiper stalk for the car because the horn didn't work and well I've found some spurs only one there but they all seem to have the same fault wiper arm not wiper arm horn switch fault now took one to bits we're on microsurgery now <clears throat> desperation isn't it so to take it apart you've got to be first very careful because it comes apart in a couple of two two halves then there's a sliding contactor bar just in the middle of your screen that can pop out and you can lose them contacts all over the floor so if you do drill see there's four rivets so i went in first with a three mil or four mil bit i went in first with this one on the rivets the rivets if we use this as an example the back the rivets are there there's four of them sorry about the hay fever today it comes and goes that's the one i stripped down you can see we've drilled the rivets now we're going to bond them in after but this is the one i'm trying to fix now then as a cable here let's get the torch as a cable at the end it pushes forward this slider bar now this one the slider bar is seized it just doesn't move so something on it is restricting it so we need to just pull that slider bar off and just have a look at why it doesn't move backwards and forwards very easily the indicator side of it's probably okay that's the indicator side we can leave that there's no point opening that up this is the only bit you've got your lights as well there so they're the indicators these are the lights here these are the indicator bars as you turn that contact to move so they're going to be all right we just need to lift this carriage off and see why it's not moving i've got spare carriage if we need it here's a spare carriage with the indicator bars on and then if we do get this fixed what i'll do i'll, I'll just give it this we'll do it now this is a, a deep grease, so this is a, a solvent. So that's cleaning solvent. Let's see what I mean. Get any gunk out of there. And now carefully we're going to lift this and just see the lay of the land because I don't there isn't any on eBay to buy and I want it want it running. So, Pete's going to have a go on the microsurgery. I lift that now, I'll be right back. Okay, it's pretty gunked up in there. So, I'm going to just give it a little one, two, buckle my shoe. It was gunked up. Just keeping it on so you can see how it's made. So now, and now, what we gotta do? I gotta make sure there's no other springs. This operating cable here, push forward. That's a bit stiff. Now it's getting better now. I think that's gunked up as well. That should be all right now. <clears throat> That's normally spring loaded at this end as well by a spring button that pulls the cable back. So I'll put this carriage back on and just see if it moves. Just have to hook it on. Put it back in a sec. Okay, I've got uh, most of this fixed now. It was a little bit stuck on some gunk, that sliding bar, but the sliding bar doesn't operate the horn. The horn, the cable for the horn, pushes up through here. You can just see it there, pointed out at the end of the screwdriver. 
that comes up and hits a contactor which is just there so that lines up with that the reason this slides is when you're dipping it pushes back that way so there's that's actually all okay and it's metering out i've had the, the test meter on it to just to um zero it through you know continuous through that's good i'm going to put a little bit of grease on the moving parts i've wire tied that together so that switch doesn't bounce out there that's the high beam low beam switch the dip beam switch that is a very thin cable it's brake cable strand i'll cut that and draw it out once i've got the two halves together we're going to have to put glue on these faces now so we've got to bond it back together so that's going to be it once it's in i'm going to have to use super glue because if you use anything else it's going to go inside it so we've got to hope that'll hold i'll probably put some kind of tie around it as well i can't think of any other way of doing it i can't really drill into these i've not got that kind of fine machinery to get into those studs those aluminium studs there so i'm gonna to have to rely on super glue and then probably maybe some little plates or something i don't know but they're not designed to be taken apart it's a one-way affair really strictly speaking there's not a lot of contact faces either so we're really pretty stuck there excuse the pun could drop resin into them it's, it's a tricky one we're pretty stuck on uh, getting this back together and finding a way of holding it together once it's it's gone back the last thing we want is that popping off and, and it probably will could drill all the way through but i haven't got machinery to do that and have bolts all the way through I'm just going to have to hope the glue's good and probably actually I've seen a way round the back there you'd get a some form of fixing round the back you could put little bracing pieces on the front depending on what kind of plastic that is either way I'm going to reassemble it and then I'll break that wire and then it's it's done should be working we should have a horn and indicator stalk made out of desperation there folks okay it's all gone back together nicely so i've done a combination of super glue and then in the rivet heads i've put the two-part epoxy <clears throat> it feels tight we are at an advantage in that the wiring plug at the back is pushing up against it so it's actually never going to strain so <clears throat> i might make a little label tag and put it here to remind me if I ever undo this the only way you're going to kill this is if you pull on these plugs here and then you, that's direct force on those rivets that we've glued so really if you're going to undo these plugs you've got to be really really careful so I'll, I'll remind myself of that I've also greased the plugs might be something you want to think about doing as well grease the plugs on the back because they're very tight and what can happen and indeed what's happened on this indicator stalk a good job we swapped it these rivets here at the back which make the contactor pins just going to tip this up they break so when you're wiggling them plugs off you've got to be so careful unwiggling the plugs at the back that's why it's good to grease them up because you can end up breaking them, them pins and that pin on this one's gone so this unit you could possibly solder that it is possible to repair it from the back if you were really clever with the iron <clears throat> what you could do to fix this pin is put the a very fine tipped iron in the end of that pin and drop it onto there then flow solder and you should be able to re-solder that you can see how that snapped off though it's very bad design but that is possible to repair from the back i could probably fix that so I'll bag that up as a future repairable. This one now, if we turn the ignition on, it's the moment of truth. I can't test the horn because it's not hooked up yet, but we should get indicate down, which we do, indicate up, which we do. And we're dipping high beam, flash beam. That's all working, it feels smooth too. The cancelling action should work. Yep, we're cancelled. Cancel again for left. 
and we cancel nice so that's working do again and we cancel nice all good and the grease has helped it as well so everything's rocking and rolling there so that's a nice little repair we've done obviously whoa when I press that then something shorted I don't like the look of that it can't have done because there's nothing connected the wires cut off no just my imagination yeah just my imagination can't imagine things <laughs> I can't can't do anything the wires cut it's probably just the ignition key wasn't quite turned or am I imagining things I'm, are we cracking up on Papa don't think so right I'm gonna connect someone's very kindly cut into the wiring harness here I think it was when we had the clacks on switch down there everyone wants to hear the clacks on I need to solder here solder there a little link it's not quite close enough to join together so I have to put a little jump link in then <clears throat> what I'll do I'll test the horn in the bay and we'll see how we go over and out for now but that's good I'm glad we got enough to get one off eBay now Ladies and gentlemen, something really special for you now. A refurbed instrument fascia there. A refurbed steering wheel over here. And centrepiece looking nice in two-pack brown. Why? Just because I could. And over here on the bench, a little bit of a we've gone we've gone off 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 chart sideways. We've gone off the chart sideways. Hold on, Phil. Hold on, Phil. I found this old radio. It was originally out of uh, Bramble. It's Bramble's original Ford Fitment radio. This is a very early factory radio, would you believe, before they switched to Blaupunkt. And whilst the radio itself, the circuit, um, is out of commission, the amplifier had a couple of dry caps and with a bit of jiggery pokery, we're in the game. We're only gone MP3. Fast forward, Bluetooth, and rewind. We've got everything here. Let's see what we got. We've got everything. We've got the whole lot. It's even illuminated. Everything. I've done an MP3 conversion on it. So here's the MP3 module. I'm not going to cover how I did this because it's it's extensively covered in my tech videos but suffice to say I had a spare module lying around I think Lee Holmes this is Lee Holmes's one. Oh no Leo yeah Lee because I think yours didn't end up in Bramble in the end uh, why was that cannot remember the reason why but I think this is Lee's unit so that's an mp3 standalone module basically used in radios and uh, public address systems and background music applications they're not expensive and what I've done is paralleled across the buttons of it the fast forward the rewind and the mode switch there's a USB stick there you can put an extension lead on it and bring it closer to the console if you want and then those wires go through an 8 core alarm cable along with a line out feed which is the low low level audio low level audio then pipes into the amplifier at a suitable point so we just find a place on the amplifier circuit usually it's on the volume pot in most instances on most radios and you can tap in to the volume pot which I've done and then you get volume control from the amplifier which is now repaired on the set itself so that's the whole affair and that's going to go in to Papa and you can see that on the back I've fitted these micro switches and luckily the design of this one because they're not all radios would be suitable for this but the rods which you press normally would have been for your preset stations hit the micro switches rewind forward and mode and they really just parallel or piggyback across the switches that are on this so you just solder them across it looks worse than it is to be fair it looks it doesn't look as bad 
Uh, yeah, it looks worse than it is, is the right word to use. So that's working. I didn't think this radio would go so easy. So, because I thought, well, I want Papa to have some music. I was going to get one of those eBay specials at 15 quid, but, you know, it wouldn't be the city if we didn't build a radio. So we've got everything, Cruel and the Gang. We've got everything. And you can switch to Bluetooth if you want. Look, it even comes up there. We won't use that display visibly in the car, but that would now accept a, a nearby phone or an Alexa or anything you want. Your smartphone will connect straight up and you're good to go. There's no, uh, you know, analog radio on it because it's not working. If it ever did come to life, you'd probably hear it because I've not disconnected. Normally you would disconnect me the output from the radio circuit at the volume you would break into the track. I've left it on. If it start, comes to life, I'll know about it. So that's that. That's that's done. It just needs boxing up. We need to put a little uh, plastic project box on this end. It takes its power from the set as well. So when I turn off, let me see if we can get the pliers on it to show you. A little bit of buzzing, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, I don't know. It's, I can't get the torque. Put a knob on the end. Do it with a knob. Again, you're down to one-handed, but should be able to do it. I don't want to slip in the short circuit on the metal bench. There we go. Ego, ego. Off we go. It should default on MP3 as well, so when you boot up, it should just come straight to MP3. If it does. Hopefully that won't copyright. Who knows the song? Would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? Yeah, we've got all the songs. Bit of Northern Soul. So that's working, and I've even got the actual mount plate from Bramble, the radio mount plate, so we can go straight into the car, look. With the original chassis mount plate a bit rusty but hell we're not going to galvanize that like we did on bramble and all the other cars and you know make everything brand new we're just going as is but it's, uh, it's good illumination as well on that i think for the purposes of a video on bramble i added a, an led in there i'm sure i did for an effect i think it was for a christine effect i think I think I added the green and that was already on. Might be wrong. But yeah, it's, uh, it's got bass as well, it's pretty good. It's fine, fine output. So I'm just going to box it up really and then we've got these crap speakers here, absolute rubbish. But I haven't got any others in stock. So I'm going to make a speaker mounting frame to put them into the dash to go up into the centre dash I'll use both speakers that's just just enough room in the dash to get two in you have to cut out I use this hole saw here look up look at this and this will cut two holes in some marine ply like this and then it's a very tight cut but if you use thick enough ply it doesn't flex so it's a, it's, it's a close call I've done it before on all the other cars it is a close call it just about goes in this will mount behind the glove box in its own box and then you put a USB extension cable I think you can get away with a meter after that it loses the uh, power rail but and then you can put your stick somewhere easy to get to probably just put it in the glove box to be fair on this on this application so that's good so basically putting the dash together and then so that when I get in the cabin of the car all that bit's done and then I'll start doing the mechanicals again like the tracking and take the head off and look at them tappets and that, that head. But yeah, I thought I'd let you know. Just uh I couldn't help myself, you know, just ended up just ended up doing it. I didn't I'd normally prep the bench ready for a job like this and I thought I was bored the other night. Well not bored, I'm never bored, but I was gonna say I was just not sleepy and i thought just go and have a play in the garret in the shed and it'd be nice to have a radio running that's 
looks that little bit different than just those retro look radios just give that little bit of a, a competitive edge so let's get let's get to work on the speaker mounting thing i won't film that because it's going to cut a square two holes in it first then cut the square you don't weaken it that way see in a sec pc we are all set up with our mp3 on the bench our radio rescued from the brink of disaster we brought it back to life two capacitors a bit of soldering iron work and uh, some jiggery pokery on the bench and you're good to go and now for a bit of uh, somebody done somebody wrong song there you go and now what's the next track we wonder uh, we're over here a bit of barry What's, what's, what's going on? Right, so we're good to go there. I'm going to show you the goods. The set. And here we are. Track forward. Sorry about the crappy dancing. You get the idea we are good to go and on this set I didn't have a small project box but as it happens this one sort of gives me a room to put that extra cable in that I had if ever was working on it but that I would like that half the size but I've put the module out at the front so you can see the, the uh, display I've cut the slot in it and I cut a hole there because this is the extender lead look it's an extender uh, there so this can be drill mounted anywhere you want obviously we don't want to damage the car so we can do either make a plate you could put it in the glove box <clears throat> somewhere on a, on a little down folding bracket on the glove box so that's uh, uh, the usb now on my car recently on tina g when we did this this lead stopped the player from recognizing the uh, stick i don't know why it works direct into the module but it wouldn't work on the lead don't know why but this one's working and it also has the line in connector as well which also connects up to the line in adapter there and you can call the line in up by just pressing the mode switch you'll see it come up on the screen on here so pressing the middle button and i get that's bluetooth it's upside down bluetooth there press again and that's auxiliary there curiously the radio won't tune now that might be why this module didn't go in the car so we've got just static normally now there's the antenna normally now you could press you could press fast forward and the module would then do an fm scan but it doesn't this one doesn't do it when you press the uh, fast forward and normally it would program one comes up that's all you get so i think this module's got a fault on the fm tuner Either that or it doesn't tune if it can't see a station, uh, a signal. I don't think so. I'm sure there's a fault on that module. <clears throat> I'll solder the antenna onto the circuit board anyway. The FM antenna doesn't really do a lot of good. They're never particularly brilliant, but we'll coil that up. And we'll just stick it out of the back. And that's the, the FM antenna. That's the best you get. So I'm just going to solder that on. It's pretty much good to go over than that. The, all the hardware and the wiring's done. I'll show you the speakers in a sec. Let's just get this aerial on. Don't worry, I'll be turning it off. 
for this. There's a little tiny miniature pad on the board for FM, making sure that doesn't land on the circuit itself. Switch off, off. I'll need the magnifier to see it. Off. Just gonna check now. You know, I think it is that one. It's probably labelled from the other side, but well, that's the only empty pad on there, so it must be that. So I'm just putting a tiny wire on the little tiny solder pad on the board, and now when I grab that cable, it should sort of do the hissing station noise. Let's just go for FM. Bluetooth, auxiliary, like that's it now. Yeah, it's trying. We are indoors. Well, that's it. It's having a go. Fault you can't scan. I've never known that before. You would normally scan now, so I can live with that. We'll have to live with it. But everything's ready to go, so that's the project box. Could have been a bit smaller, of course. That's the extender cable, so that will... You wouldn't see this, it's going to be hidden behind the glove box. The only time you have to see this is if you wanted to check something on there and set the equaliser. It does have a separate SMC card, whatever they're called. Another, another card you can leave on board. And um, I think this one overrides it. <clears throat> if you don't have anything in, you can have like you basically your, your your tunes of all time permanently logged in it. There's an infrared receiver there which you use for setting the uh, graphic equaliser. It's possible we could use that to set some local stations and store them, and it might work the radio that way. But I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's just one of the things I didn't expect to get this even going. There's the speaker set up. It fits exactly in the where the oval speaker goes, that's an exact fit, it's actually a wedge fit. We put just a little bit of tiger seal around it, then wedge it up. You can always take it out after. Those speakers aren't the best, but they were in stock. So that's how I build them. You've got to go that thickness with the ply. When you put that up then, the radio will be sitting just virtually underneath like that. That's how much clearance you've got, virtually no clearance at all. You've got about five mil between the radio and the speaker it's very close but it does work i've done it on all my cars so we're good to go there we've got the chassis now to fit we'll pre-fit the radio into this you have these brackets here which fit at the side and they secure it in there they're needed or you can make these i happen to have these but you can make them they're the radio installation brackets. If you've never had this type of radio set up, you'd need those. So that's it. That's everything that we need for the MP3. We should be, should be, we should be running in in a about. Well, we're running in about an hour. Then I will clear up. Um, I would have been doing the tracking today and the back brake lights, but I just felt like if I just blitz on with this radio now while we're on a roll. We're going to get it nailed and it's just one job out of the way because i was thinking oh, on the car then i'll have to eventually get an mp3 in there nice to have the sounds from day one especially when we're putting the dash back together so i think we've done good there folks see you in a sec when it's all in the car okay the nice new wheels on that center console's on there is i think a bearing gone in the steering column because i can it's all tightened up and getting movement here. So there's a bearing at the top, but I don't think of that. I think I don't think it's that. I think it's rocking on that top bearing. I think it's the bottom bushing coming out the bulkhead. I better check that. Uh, radio's in and running. Oh, 
speaker nothing no problem there fast forward rewind it's not a bad sound for what it is I'll be keeping these stickers by the way if anyone asks they're staying on they're cool they just part the car there's that new mirror there's that interior light working so a lot of work on the interior patreons i've been flat out that radio was four hours wipers the other day the other week four hours cigarette lighter four hours light uh heat um, light switch that's uh, that's easy enough um that but that was replaced dash cowling repaired the instrument bulbs they're all nicely lit up the horns on four hours on the horn <laughs> i've left it old school sounding rattly some stuff i'm leaving some stuff i'm refurbing that squeak there that's fine that's just because i've got a a, f a new foam pad here and this would normally sit a bit more central the foam pad's probably a bit too thick so it's lifting that i wanted to put a new pad on because it was all worn out i think that'll get better it'll work its way in if not I'll, I'll slice the foam pad so don't worry about that but there is play in the burn so we're done there for today i'm tired i'm gonna go it's up since half five so and uh, here's the mp3 lead out so we can just fit that where we want. Just put a bracket on. I don't want to drill anything though, really. We need to put it somewhere like this. Maybe to the floor on a bracket. Maybe a little mini console there or something like that we'll, we'll make. Well, that's it. It works good. It does work fine. I like the illumination on it. I think that should go off with ignition. Let's just check. I should reboot it. It's working brilliant. That I've not tried the Bluetooth yet. Off with ignition, and you're good to go. That is it for today. Another day. I'm going to keep this switch here and make it a hazard light switch. Okay, lots of time taken to do that. Uh, did I show you the wings? What's this? I've been looking for that wire. And gaps are good. This side gapping is blooming really, really good. I'm not bolting this wing down yet. So waiting, I've got the pain, but it's not a chance to do it. I've done the bump stops. I've tried to get that the best I can. That's the best I can slightly. I might just get it. If you look, we're closing a bit here. And we're open a bit here and we're closed a bit there so I think what we'll probably have to do is just bring the bonnet back a little bit and that'll get that in but it's right this side look really nice and that gap's good and that's all good there yeah so the bonnet wants to move a touch this side Your gaps are all good there. So yeah, starting to look a bit like a car. I've got this chrome insert to put in to here. It's a bit tricky. You've got to pull back on the rubber and push in. Has anyone done that on Patreon on your cars? Let me know if it's a technique because I've got half of it on at the front. I ran out of thumb power. It actually burned my thumbs out. I've got that in and I got that in need to do longer run at, well the second longest run at the top and then another pillar now you saw the lights there's the little horn genuine motorcraft one it's a bit it's a bit uh, sounds old school 
Well, that's all right. It's a bit of a mix match of new bits, a couple of bits of modern bits, but everything working really good. The washer jets work great and the wipers work really smooth. We took them all to bits. Wait till you see the videos. I've got so much. I've got seven hours of footage to edit. Seven hours and I've got behind because I've been getting in late doing this. I'd normally be on the editing. I'm trying to get a video up for YouTube. So apologies, patrons, if this week's YouTube beats the videos on, on Patreon. Well, it won't beat these ones as you're right up to date. The YouTube one will be from months ago. But it's one you, I've not put on Patreon either. It's the welding. So uh, apologies for that. But it's, um, trying to get, get a, something out for Friday night. Because Crazy Chris is doing a, a, a film. So we're trying to double bill it. So I wasn't going to do one for YouTube. I was just going to do it Patreon. Anyway, Patreon update for you. Patreon update for you. What do you reckon? Looking like a car. I'm looking for one L wheel. If you know anyone who's got an L wheel. This is what they look like.